A very good afternoon and welcome to the Academy Stadium here in Manchester for Women's FA Cup quarter-final action as Manchester City gets set to take on the visitors Liverpool this afternoon. City flying high atop the WSL table at the moment, although Arsenal in second place do have two games in hand on the blue half of Manchester. Liverpool sat in eight, struggling in the league campaign at the moment, but they would love to come here and get a upset result against Manchester City and make their way into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. They've been on a fine run of form as well, although lost in their last outing, Liverpool, to Chelsea, 4-0. So we see the City players arriving. Nikita Paris there, just on the right of your screen. Jill Scott there too. Paris, of course, in a rich vein of scoring form as she has become very much the face of this side this season. All smiles as she arrived here earlier today. Steph Horton as well on the right-hand side there. Very much used to these sorts of big occasions. But I have to say the Liverpool team when they turned up here at the Academy Stadium looked very relaxed indeed. The likes of Laura Coombs, Christy Murray. Sola, Pavagida, all just looked like they were taking in this build up to the game and such an important tie as well in their stride. A few smiles as well from the players as they made their way to the dressing room. They know, I think, that that blip against Chelsea was certainly just a little mistake they've been in. Excellent form in this competition. They put six goals past MK Dons and then a 2-0 victory against Millwall Lionesses in the last two rounds. And there's a steely focus behind the smiles that coming here and getting the job done. It's certainly a possibility today. The surface just getting a quick sprinkle before kickoff. Beautiful afternoon here at the Academy Stadium. Sun shining down. Conditions pretty much perfect. It's not really freezing cold and too cold to get the blood flowing. Certainly not overbearingly hot in any way, shape or form here in early March. Of course, the last two times that these sides have met the earlier meeting in this WSL in September Manchester City on the road against Liverpool were able to come away with a big 3-0 victory Liverpool though winning the meeting before that back in May 2018 that was with a slender 1-0 victory on a split the last two meetings but Liverpool will know that Nikita Paris had a brace in that last game back in September in Liverpool and revenge will certainly be wanted by the away side. We can take a look at the starting 11s for both these two teams, starting with Manchester City, who make three changes from their last FA Cup outing against Tottenham Hotspur, a convincing 3 0 victory out is Roebuck between the posts, Emsley and Hemp as well. Bardsley back between the sticks, Becky and Woolert. Come into what's expected to be a midfield four. And of course, Nikita Paris leading the line for them. 18 goals in 17 games in the WSL this season for the forward. As for Liverpool, they make four changes from their last FA Cup outing. That 2-0 victory against Millwall. Change between the sticks for them too as Kitching is replaced by Annika Pris, Roberts, Linnett. 
and Satara Murray also out from the starting 11. Leanne Robb, Yana Daniels and Amy Rogers are the three new arrivals into the outfield positions. Their main focus of the attack will be Courtney Sweetman-Kirk. Seven goals in the league this season so far for her. We are almost ready for the teams to walk out from the tunnel. Everything down on the pitch is just being prepared. City haven't lost a game in all competitions since September. A loss on home soil, though, against Atletico in club competition. Europe, of course, the Women's UEFA Champions League. A 2-0 defeat that sent them crashing out of the competition. 3-1 on aggregate. Since then, though, 18 victories and three draws for the seemingly unstoppable City women. Liverpool, in that loss to Chelsea, ending a four-game winning streak for them that included both their last two FA Cup ties against MK Dons and Millwall Lionesses. The last time they lost to Chelsea back in October sparked a five-game losing run for Liverpool. They will be praying... That doesn't happen once again. They'll be looking to bounce back immediately from that hefty defeat to Chelsea this afternoon. elsewhere in the earlier kickoff in the quarterfinals Chelsea were on the road taking on Durham and Chelsea's women's side have made their way into the final four of the women's FA Cup with a 1-0 victory on the road we will try and keep you across all of the other quarterfinals kicking off at two o'clock local time this afternoon Reading against Manchester United and Aston Villa taking on West Ham United as well but this is certainly by far the biggest game of the quarter-final stage. Good to see a healthy attendance here at the Academy Stadium that sits almost in the shadow of the Etihad where Manchester City's men's side play their football. It's a wonderful training complex in the Academy Stadium here. We've built around the Etihad Stadium. If you ever get a chance to come up to Manchester, it's certainly worth a look at the facilities if you can find a way in. Not necessarily saying you should sneak in any way, shape or form, that's for sure. two sides then a warm reception as Liverpool making their way out in their chain strip this afternoon purple with the orange numbers on their back and a little bit of orange trim including the sponsors logos on the shirt Manchester City of course in their light blue shirts white shorts and dark blue socks Take a look at the starting 11s once again. Bardsley between the posts for Manchester City. Stokes, Beatty, Horton and Bonner, the expected back four. Becky and Woolock coming into the starting 11 in the outfield. Walsh, Scott, Nikita Paris and Caroline Weir making up the starting side for Manchester City this afternoon. Well, Liverpool have Anna Capris back between the sticks. Liam Robb, Yana Daniels and Amy Rogers joining the likes of Sophie Bradley, Auckland, Nephi, Gemma Purfield, Laura Coombs, Christy Murray, Sola Babajida and Corny Sweetman-Kirk in the starting 11 for the visitors today. 
last huddle as well from the Liverpool side just away to our right the City players huddling all as a squad it's a chance then to continue their path to a possible domestic treble the Conti Cup already in the bag earlier this season won on penalties against Arsenal WSL title still in the balance Liverpool will play a role in that one as well of course they still have to come back here to take on Manchester City their next outing Liverpool is against Arsenal who are the side trying to chase down City very much feel that this club from Merseyside has a big part to play in Manchester City's fate for the season Peter Gibbons, the man in the middle, meeting the captains. That Liverpool team still not breaking out of their huddle just yet. Final words of encouragement. City set and rearing to go here. Final word from Horton to Nikita Paris, who is stood over the ball, ready to get us underway. City will kick from left to right on your screens. Liverpool in their change strip of all purple, kicking from right to left. And we are underway in the FA Cup quarter-final. And expect City to try and establish themselves very early on in this one as they look to take control. As the captain Horton just playing it straight across the back line. Overhit in front of Jennifer Beatty. Stokes pull pass inside is picked off by Coombs fired forward by Bradley Auckland but again can't find a teammate be interesting to see who settles down first in this big occasion who feels more comfortable home field advantage will certainly play into that you feel as the ball over the top goes searching for Nikita Paris and she's done well here could be the perfect start for City Lines fluffed at the last moment. What an opportunity for the home side to find the breakthrough. As you'd expect, Paris at the heart of everything positive going forward for City straight from the get-go. Unselfish to pull it back as well. Becky sending it wide of the target. Certainly positive signs, though, particularly for Nikita Paris, that she is going to be able to unlock this Liverpool defence. Perfield with the throw. Very versatile player. Certainly likes to get forward whenever she can. Started out as a winger, really, before being moved back into this fullback position. Under the guidance of Victoria Jepson, the Liverpool coach. Perfield, of course, scored in a club debut against MK Dons. In the FA Cup earlier this season in that 6-0 route that Liverpool had. Party goes short out from the back to Beatty. Walsh.
Thread a ball into the left channel. Becky chasing it down. Does seem that she's playing up alongside Nikita Paris with Caroline Witt. And that left midfield role. We imagine that Paris will be sitting just ahead of Janine Becky. Murray sends it forward. to Babajida there from the goal kick interesting to see if that's the route one option that Liverpool tried to adopt for much of this game early going they've struggled to really get their foot on the ball although here is the forward now admittedly with her back to goal Coombs swings it into the box easily headed away though As Liverpool pushing bodies forward there might be a fair bit of space in behind Bullet. Back to the captain once again. Peter just pause and find space rather than forcing anything forward, City at the moment. It's a neat little one-two in the heart of the pitch. Trying to thread it through the gap as well. Paris is still closing down. It was slightly awkward there from Nifahe. Seemed at one moment to be caught between two minds, the Liverpool defender. Just couldn't be brought under control there by Caroline Weir. Alton. Bullet. The turn in the heart of the pitch. It's a shame the pass was lacking the same quality. Alton's all time leading scorer coming to City this season. Bonner feeding it down that right sideline but well cut out well watched there by Perfield again to the City right back she's going to have a real job on her hands trying to collect that one though cleared away by Murray once more and that doesn't find a teammate Daniels closing down on the far side good strong challenge that by Daniels and Coombs comes away with it pass forward is just behind its intended target though capitalise on those little opportunities that they get Liverpool when City do give possession away in the middle of the park and in dangerous positions and just are suddenly caught on their heels slightly easy collection that for the German keeper under no pressure whatsoever Walsh hanging her head there in frustration after that pass. 
There's a little bit of space on that City left flank. Certainly no need to be so inaccurate with the delivery out to the far side. She's again Kira Walsh, better with the pass. Neat flick on as well by Paris. Right idea, just not quite the execution. Control that from Walsh, seeing a lot of the ball suddenly in the last minute or so. Closing down by Abajida. Morton thinking about the long ball. Tries the deaf flick instead. Falls kindly down to Becky. It's a tough chase indeed for Demi Stokes. She's never going to get there. She thought about it just for a moment. Decided to let up. Flicked on by Daniels. that by Scott support further up the field as well Weir was making the run into that left channel wonderful control from Paris there she's gone down she feels she was caught as well referee says the ball was taken and Liverpool try to hit on the counter-attack Sweetman Kirk down on the ground trying to stay alive and she gets a free kick Was Nikita Paris pulled down there unfairly? Let's have a look. It's a good turn. It's a strong challenge, I think, more than anything else. Worth a shout. Not sure she was ever going to get the outcome she wanted. Ball was definitely taken first. In the meantime, Coombs has stood over this one. Too many blue shirts around the ball. Coon scrapping with Paris and does win the aerial battle. Gets an aimless ball over the top though, looking for that Liverpool front line. Scott just under pressure, but the experienced head of the 32-year-old, so calm and composed in that sort of situation. Not so over on the far side though. Sweetman Kirk goes short. just about dealing with the pressure off the ball there around their own 18-yard box it's going to come back that way again though quick throw from Perfield it's just a little isolated up top though the 20-year-old centre forward Babajida Stokes has to go back. BT looking for the run of Paris once again. She's always trying to find that little bit of space in behind the Liverpool back line. It's when they win it back in this sort of area that City look really threatening though, although 
have to say the away side closing down the passing routes forward boomed away to safety and Abajida will chase that one down she needs support it's arriving as well Sweetman Kirk can it find up not quite tidy challenge just to ensure that Liverpool forward got nowhere near the pass inside from Babajida rare nervy moment for City at the back there suddenly free kick Stokes brought down by the lunging challenge chance to get some size in the box as Jill Scott makes her way to the heart of the penalty area Jennifer Beattie just lurking towards the back post most in line with the penalty spot the number five for Manchester City An effort on goal instead that goes sailing over the top of the crossbar quite comfortably. Perhaps a touch selfish as well to have a crack on goal from that sort of range. She scored a cracking free kick against Tottenham earlier in this competition, did Steph Horton. Couldn't replicate it there though. you stick around with us at the interval we will be bringing you a brief feature on Steph Horton and how she lines up her set pieces that one probably won't make it into the show reel though well one in the heart of the pitch by Scott Stokes no room to go forward has to go inside instead City moving the ball neatly once again and getting runners in to support the attack Weir to Paris into the box cleared away Bradley Auckland able to get a boot to it first another probing pass from Horton well, it wasn't intentional I don't think but just a trip from behind on BT. on this near side big first time ball as well from the right back Gemma Bonner support on the overlap coming from Stokes hit it's a good run from the fullback again though the cross is just lacking slightly that final ball is just eluding Manchester City at the moment patient from Weir just off balance as well was Demi Stokes Again, City very quick to win possession back. Lovely ball once again into the channel. Tidy intervention from Bradley Auckland once more. 
just holding on at the back at times Liverpool Daniel's able to just about come away with it to Liam Robe Vegeta, little knockdown, trying to keep the ball on the deck, but the passing in close quarters a little inaccurate at times. Scott just flips it out effortlessly to that far side. Peter Paris unable to latch onto the ball in. Stokes. off the mark Bonner with the pass she went immediately looking for the return ball as well when City are pressing they really are aggressive to the mixer from the forward Babajida Liverpool keep possession and a chance perhaps to launch another ball into the danger zone Move wide by Coombs. Sweetman Kirk. Backed on down the heart of the pitch. It almost dropped to the feet of Murray. Who stayed forward, but instead the effort from range from Coombs will roll safely towards Bardsley. It hasn't had too much to do, the City goalkeeper, so far. Venom in the pass from Horton there. Scott. Heavy touch that just allowed Christy Murray to intervene. And she is again the number 10. miscue pass from the captain second one in a row when she's tried to get City on the front foot and forward and she's got to make sure she's not beaten down this left side here for Vegeta looking to go on her own perhaps here wide of that near post took the shot on herself hasn't had many opportunities in the early going you have to say the 20 year old From a Watford, Millwall and Palace player. Just seeing her first sight at goal, but unable to hit the target. For a moment, Bardsley might have been worried, though. She scored an absolute cracker against her former club in the last round of the FA Cup against Millwall. The goals have been hard to come by, though, for her, I have to say. It's the Belgian, Bullet. Lovely knock inside too. Cleared away. Great combination between Janine Becky and Tessa Bullet there.
Neither side have conceded in the FA Cup yet this season. You can see why as we've gone past the midway point in this first half. City winning that midfield battle, making it very difficult for Liverpool to really get many attacks going. For the Merseyside side's back line. It's certainly been strong and resilient and just making sure that City aren't given any space and any comfort in the final third to time a telling pass. Nod down for Scott, who's got room in front of her hit. As does Paris. Neat knock inside to Becky, who's in on goal. Again, squared across instead of pulling the trigger herself. She will do this time. City have the breakthrough. Deservedly so as well. Back in the starting 11. The Canadian, Janine Becky, with the opener. Really well taken eventually. Did worry she'd squandered the first opportunity. Great diagonal run inside. That I thought was going to be the chance. Then fortuitously it fell back to her. Beats the keeper at the near post, but point blank range. There was no real chance there for the German shot stopper. Perhaps as we'd expected, really. City controlling a lot of the game. It's whether Liverpool can sneak one on the counter attack, perhaps. Thought the first goal was going to be important. There's plenty of time still left on the clock, of course, for Liverpool in this one. The way the home side have controlled the opening 25 minutes. It does seem it's going to be a tough game for the away side to get back into. Stokes supported. We're just trying to flick it through. Walsh, good intervention by the right back rope. She's not giving up the chase at all, is she? And Sola Babajida. She's looking very isolated at times, though, in that Liverpool front line. Good work by Coombs just to shake the attention of her marker. Murray. Oh, we're really for Sweetman Kirk to go. Perfield, who hasn't really had a chance to get forward too often. Just a shove in the back there on Jill Scott. Wasn't too much from Murray, but was certainly enough to warrant the free kick. Scott, who already had a very impressive resume before she came to Manchester City, was described as an integral signing for the club. Well, they had to have her, the box-to-box -box midfielder. 
Coombs does very well on the deck, lifting it into Murray. An awkward one for her to bring under control though, and she couldn't find Daniels either. Big pass inside by Walsh. Bullard. It's on the same wavelength as her teammates. We are chasing down on the far side. Preventing Liverpool from playing out from the back. High press suddenly adopted here by City. Ball again, have to go long. It falls kindly on the rebound to Murray. She too, though, tries to force it through. Scott more than happy to move with the ball. Walsh gives it inside. Paris closed down by two. This is a problem again for Liverpool. The free kick at least goes Abajida's way. So when they do get plenty of bodies back behind the ball and make life difficult for City, just leaves the forward isolated. She's going to be asked to do a lot of the hold-up play. Coombs, Murray. Looking once again for Sweetman Kirk on this near side. Perfield over the top. It's going to stay in play. Misjudged by almost everybody except for Paris, who ends up with the body of Nifai going over the top of her. 15 minutes to go before the break. City still lead by just the one goal. Janine Becky with the strike. That probably has been City's best move of the game so far. I tell you that. West Ham have taken the lead in one of the other quarter-finals on the road against Aston Villa. Jane Ross with the strike. Everybody looking to join Chelsea in the semi-finals, including Liverpool. This is a great opportunity, but Avajida just closed down at the last second. What a recovery challenge that was by Jennifer Beatty. Still trying to carve something out, though, the away side. Daniels wins a free kick in a good position. Just for a moment, City falling asleep at the back. Not so beaty though. The Scottish defender with a well-timed lunge, and it had to be well-timed as well. Couldn't afford to make any mistakes. Plenty in the box waiting for the delivery. And towards the forward. And then well over the top of the crossbar on the follow-up. And certainly nothing that's going to threaten that City goal once again. Rising ball like that. Even really on the half volley. Always an awkward one to keep down. High press suddenly from Liverpool this time. Sweetman Kirk just putting Bonner under pressure.
Bardsley. Orton. Space for Bonner to run into, but she was always being shepherded away from the overhit pass. That's a neat flick through, offside flag goes up before Sweetman Kirk can latch on to it. Sure, Nick Cushing will have just a word or two with his back line about switching off. It's a little bit fragile at times, and they've certainly done it a couple of times, particularly in the last 10 minutes or so since that goal. Safety first from the right back. Do you feel Liverpool need to change something in their approach? Might be this higher press up the pitch that causes problems for City. It has done there. Coombs switches it back out to the far side. Daniels looking for an easy pass. Goes into the channel. Almost able to turn away from BT as well, but Avagido was just caught. Just limping slightly, she's had a few knocks and bruises in the opening 36 minutes. Chance to swing one into the box from that far sideline, easily headed away though at the near post. Scott pushes it on. Weir chasing down. Should be kept away from it very well though by Leanne Rope. Facing behind that Liverpool defence suddenly, but the ball just won't hold up. Right idea, and Nikita Paris gives the sign of approval. Did get a lot of water on it before kick-off did this surface. Murray didn't know where that header had gone. That's a good effort too from range, and Barsley has to tip it wide. Kavajida just starting to grow into the game as we approach the half-time whistle. First opportunity with a bit of space in front of her and a chance to pull the trigger. Struck it really well too. Chance to keep the pressure on as well with this set piece. Christy Murray to swing it in. Palmed away by Bardsley. Not well away though. Loop back into the mixer once again, but over hit. Wasn't really a pass, wasn't really a shot either. But either way, Karen Bardsley, happy to see it go safely away. Would pass, that's not going to be kept in either. Not sure who you can point the finger of blame at. Bardsley just didn't seem to be prepared to move for it. Overhit slightly by Beatty. Just seemed to misjudge it, the goalkeeper. 
Either way, Liverpool have another set piece. Vegeta was claiming for that. I don't think there was any real need to make the claim. By Murray. Tipped away by the keeper once more. Daniels. Perfield across to Laura Coombs. Driven in low along the deck. Murray was the closest to it. No Liverpool player could get onto it. Nikita Paris trying to just lead City out from the back and relieve the pressure. First real consistent spell of pressure that Liverpool have had. Need to try and find something because they still trail here. Good shimmy by Scott. Walsh across. Lovely flick in towards the near post. Unable to test the keeper though with that. Top, another one to be chased down, another one for BT and Co to deal with. She's able to connect with her goalkeeper a little better. Horton. Lovely switch of play. She does have an excellent long ball in her arsenal. Walsh. Coombs closing down quickly. I almost feel that City at times are just trying to lure Liverpool further up the field to create that space in behind. They keep going across to BT and Horton to start the attacks at the halfway line. Stokes feeds it into the channel. Couldn't pick out a teammate inside. Scott. Lovely combination down the right sideline. Hoisted to safety by Perfield. They can't quite turn it on when they want to at will, but. And they do get it going, City. Playing some really neat stuff. This another little purple patch for them, if you will. Weir. Cheaply given away once again. And he sends it out wide. He's having to go back before it goes forward. The long ball can't find its intended target. Well scrapped for by Murray. Under pressure, though, from Scott. Stokes almost wasn't ready for that pass out to her. Back again with the left back, a little further forward this time. Shortlisted for the Player of the Month award for February. With this woman on the ball, Kira Walsh. Great work by Stokes. Corner for City.
plenty of bodies in the box. PT and Horton up from the back. Both lurking on the edge of the area. They make their way into the mix and now still pinging around, almost dropped. Oh, Nikita Paris almost at the feet of BT as well. Scott lays it off. Struck wide in the end from the woman that opened the scoring. The rare sight on goal for Janine Becky. Very exciting young talent indeed, the 24-year-old from Saskatchewan in Canada. She's made a mark on proceeding so far in this one. Final 30 seconds or so off the half, plus any stoppage time. Foul throw given over on the far side. Not one that you often see penalised, but certainly a lot of shouts for it. The cheap way for Liverpool to give away possession. the one minute of stoppage time to be added on here at the end of the first half is there a last chance for City to try and probe and press Weir looking for support might have to try and beat her marker herself well watched in the end by Leanne Rowe good turn couldn't be taken on by Becky Paris able to bring it under control though Excellent challenge once again, although free kick given against the Liverpool captain. Bradley Auckland a little bemused that she was penalised for that. It's similar to the one earlier on in the first half when Paris went down inside the box. That one wasn't given, the one outside of the area was. and stood over it she leaves it Weir strikes Wall does its job the first half comes to an end with City on top and they are on top as well on the score sheet just the one goal separating these two sides Janine Becky strike after 25 minutes giving City the advantage and at the half time break it's Manchester City 1 Liverpool 0 Well, stay with us. Second half action coming your way in about 15 minutes' time or so. We have all of the highlights from midweek's action in the WSL and, of course, our feature presentation. Our chat with Steph Horton of Manchester City coming up right now. Third place Chelsea travel to Liverpool looking to close the gap on WSL leaders Manchester City. Six points behind heading into this fixture, it didn't take Emma Hayes' side long to break the deadlock. Ramona Backman combining with Frank Kirby, England striker with a cool finish to make it 1-0. Just minutes later and the defending champions were presented with an opportunity to double their lead. The referee pointing to the spot after Kirby's shot struck the arm of Leandra Little. Kirby stepped up, sending Anka Proust the wrong way for her and Chelsea's second. The visitors continued to move through the gears and Proust had to be at full stretch to keep out Erin Cuthbert's header. After the break, the Chelsea pressure continued. Little's header from Jonna Anderson's cross forced the save from Proust. Backman inches away from getting on the end of Hannah Blundell's resulting shot. Kirby and Backman's link-up play continued to cause Liverpool problems and they'd have a third goal on 52 minutes. Kirby at it again to complete her hat-trick, a second in as many WSL games.
Liverpool were struggling to deal with Kirby and she was again teed up by Backman moments later. Only she will know how her effort failed to hit the target. Deep into stoppage time and Chelsea put the seal on the victory. Substitute Adelaina Engman meeting Blundell's cross to round off a comfortable evening for the Blues who keep pace with Arsenal and leaders Manchester City. I think it's fair to say that Fran's got a big year ahead of her. A lot of people are expecting her to have a very big year and a special night for her tonight as well. Yes, it's, of course it is. Getting a hat trick is, you know, what, what Fran expects for herself, but it's a big year for England, not just for Fran. And Fran is, you know, um, an important part of that, but they have a lot of players that can equally contribute. Manchester City were aiming to extend their lead at the top of the WSL table as they travelled to Reading. But the hosts were looking to spoil City's title charge and they went ahead on three minutes. Remy Allen's flick on found Rook Chaplin and the former Sunderland striker did well to fire the Royals ahead. However, Nick Cushing's team were undeterred by the early setback and it was no surprise as to who the goal scorer was when they drew level. Nikita Paris with a brilliant take and finish from Jill Scott's searching pass. England striker drawing level with Vivian Miedemar at the top of the goal scoring charts. This her 16th of the season. <laughs> Steph Orton scored a brilliant free kick for England in the She Believes Cup, but she was denied by Grace Maloney on 20 minutes as she tried to replicate that for her club. Reading could and should have gone back in front just after the half hour, but Allen was unable to hit the target for what would have been her second goal this season. And after that miss, the tide turned. First, Jill Scott was unable to connect to Georgia Stanway's cross. But then Paris grabbed her second of the game. This coming 10 minutes before half time. Demi Stokes finding the former Everton striker who once again coolly found the back of the net. Just three minutes later, Paris completed a first half hat trick. Abby McManus with the through ball and the striker helping herself to her eighth goal in 2019. If City's first three had come from a familiar source, there was a surprise name on the score sheet early in the second half. Stokes latching on to a Paris assist to net her first goal of the season and make it 4-1. At that point, it looked like game over, but Reading had other ideas. The home side were awarded a penalty on the hour mark, but Manis ruled to have upended Allen. And from 12 yards, Farrah Williams did what Farrah Williams does, converting the spot kick to make it 4-2. This the midfielder's eighth goal of the campaign. Williams then went close to making it five league goals in five games, but her free kick fizzed past Ellie Roebuck's far post. There was to be more drama though. Reading made it 4-3 with just three minutes remaining. Club captain Kirsty Pierce on hand to turn the rebound home after Roebuck had saved from Rachel Furness's header. It wasn't enough though as City held on to extend their lead at the top for five points. You seem to be really clinical in front of goal. How much confidence does that give you as a player each time you get you receive the ball in front of goal? You seem to put it in the back of the net. Yeah, massive confidence I feel like over the years clinical is what I haven't been and over the last couple of years it's starting to creep into my game and it needs to continue um, in order for me to progress so um, it's great that um, I scored the goal tonight but mainly the result was the best. Looking to threaten here. It's not going to be a problem for the Arsenal goalkeeper in Pero Magna. Little driving on. Little still, can she get a shot away? Oh, and the instinctive header from Van der Donk. And so very nearly the opening goal of the game. Just 
Bristol City with plenty of players back behind the ball. Little again. It's all very narrow. Miedemar opens up for the shot, perhaps. Miedemar still! She's got her goal! And it just had to be. Straight back to Bristol City, but the midfield battle being won by Arsenal. Through he goes, Van der Donk. Should take a chance. Oh, he might just go in. Just in the nick of time, the clearance was an invaluable one from Evans to deny Van der Donk scoring against Bristol City again. Van der Donk for Evans. The movement from Arsenal is brilliant. Here's Little. She can gather it under control. Oh my word! How on earth has that not gone in? Well, it's Arsenal's turn to give the ball away cheaply through Van der Donk. Rutherford to turn on the sixpence. It still might work out here. Oh, and acrobatics in the end from Pedro Mani. Minamar, great touch from her. Minamar, it is brilliant. And that is why she is so good. That first touch was absolutely exquisite. Shorter option again here for Arsenal looking to catch out Bristol City. Here's Little, and Little takes it on, and it should have been three. Oh, great chance for Kim Little. And the flag stays down, McCabe! Right, so simple. So simple in the end for Arsenal. Superbly picked out. Katie McCabe getting in on the act. It comes towards Miedemar, and she gets her hat-trick. There is just simply no stopping Vivian Miedemar this season. Carter, oh, it's a good try. That would have been a memorable way to come back. And three goals for you, hat-trick. 28 goals now leading score in the WSL thoughts on that I'm just happy I can help the team and I think that's my biggest goal and we all, like the girls are joking about it but I'm just focused on winning the like the title here and that's my main goal and if I become top goal scorer it's just an extra bonus but it's not my main focus come on then I'll show you my free kick routine <laughs> one getting a hold of the ball, uh, place it where the referee tells us to place it or maybe trying to sneak a few yards if it's a bit farther away from goal and trying to just get in the zone. Step two would be eyeing up where the keeper is um, and where she's placed the ball so then that in my head it kind of decides what technique I'm going to use or how hard I'm going to hit the ball. <laughs> Step three would be my run off. I think it's something that I've really worked on over the last few years in terms of how I strike a ball and for me it's normally around two and a half steps. Step four, be waiting for the referee, making sure that I'm in the zone. I've took that little bit of a breath, I took a bit of time. Step five would be making sure I try and score a goal. And for me, the way that I strike the ball, the technique that I use is the instep of my foot. I think there's other players that can hit it harder than me, but for me, it's all about being precise and trying to get it away from the keeper as much as I can. Fran, you ain't saving that, are you? There's a few, I think there's, in terms of the best technique one, I think it was probably not to count away for Man City. Um, I think in terms of uh, how far the ball was out, the corner went in. I was playing against Carly and she's a very good keeper and she probably knows where I put my free kicks. So I think for that, in terms of technique and actually power, I think um, that was probably the best one. Steph Orton there. 
taking us through her piece routine and she certainly is a specialist with the dead ball she will be beaming I'm sure in the Manchester City locker room at half time because here at the Academy Stadium in Manchester her side have the advantage 1-0 over Liverpool and look to be booking their place in the FA Cup semi-finals alongside Chelsea who were winners earlier today in their quarter-final game fixtures elsewhere being played Villa taking on West Ham West Ham taking the lead in that game 1-0 at the half-time break Reading taking on Manchester United as well that's still goalless in the other quarter-final let's take a look at some of the half-time highlights then Manchester City pretty much on the front foot for the majority of this game and controlling large parts of it Liverpool have had fleeting moments of getting forward but this was the opening goal of the game a wonderful little combination between Nikita Paris and Janine Becky the Canadian so unselfish initially to square it across to Caroline Weir and it fell straight back to her a little kindly the build-up was nice the finish was nice it was just that final moment when you thought perhaps that Janine Becky could have pulled the trigger a little earlier Liverpool's best chance of the game well there have been few and far between but Babajida with a crack from Reigns that was well saved in the end by Karen Bardsley it's the only real test on Bardsley's goal she hasn't had too much to do she will want it to stay that way so you just see her warming up there just on that near touchline all in orange for City and the City players out from the dressing room reminder of the half-time score there on your screen City 1 Liverpool 0 really you can only see one team scoring perhaps in this second half if it continues the way the first half did I imagine Victoria Jepson the Liverpool coach will have had a few words and maybe even be thinking about making some changes for this second half either in the style and approach or perhaps from the substitutes bench as well because right now our only centre forward on the pitch is looking certainly cast adrift compared to the rest of the side in fairness Sweetman Kirk and Yana Daniels have both really tried to support Rinsola Babajida. Sweetman Kirk in particular getting forward down this left flank, but there just hasn't been much from really Murray or Coombs at times. Haven't seen too much either of Amy Rogers in this game. I expect perhaps renewed life from Liverpool as they come out for this second half. Can't see any changes from the City side down there. Should be the same 11 that started the first half. Just see Caroline Weir, Becky and Stephanie Stokes down there too, just having a very brief conference as a three. Nikita Paris and Janine Becky having words. They're almost playing as a 4-4-1-1 with Becky sitting just off Paris, who is leading the line. They are being made to wait very patiently indeed, the City players. Just see Peter Gibbons down there. Waiting to get things going. Finally, Liverpool break from their huddle and we can get this second half underway. Coombs stood over it. She's actually going to leave it for Christy Murray. For the Doncaster Bells player and we are back underway in this FA Cup quarter-final between Manchester City and Liverpool. City with the advantage then as we start this second half. No changes from either side at the interval. Let's see what changes in Liverpool's approach though as they look to try and find this equaliser. inside to the goal scorer well taken as well just that second touch a little too heavy a Vegeta Murray spreading it into the space just undercooked it across to Daniels I'm not sure she was the intended target but it was over hit too far in front of Coombs
Becky just off balance as she played that, but able to move herself out of trouble. Scott. Broken up again by Jill Scott. Really is a very complete midfielder. It's the Canadian once again. Twisting and turning down to the byline. Decent ball across goal. It does seem that she's just shifted out to the left and Weir's come inside just to start this second half for City. Jenny Becky's delivery into the box, unable to find a teammate. City, of course, did win the Women's FA Cup back in the 2016-17 season with a victory over Birmingham in the final. Last time they won this competition. A long time for Liverpool since they even last made the final of the FA Cup 1996, losing to Croydon. 3-2 on penalties after a 1-1 draw. They actually made three consecutive finals in a row. Losing in 1995 to Arsenal, 94 to Doncaster Bells. They were known as Knowsley United back then before the club was founded. Paris, lovely threaded ball. Just needs that final layoff, but Becky was under pressure. Coombs trying to release it into the space. Well read though by Horton. across Stokes Rowe keeping Becky at bay certainly a spring in the city steps to start this second period shove in the back but nothing penalised against Liverpool bit of rough and tumble defending Horton, ill-advised that first touch and Coombs comes away with it now. Options to the left and right. Flag stays down, Sweetman Kirk fires it straight into the arms of Bardsley and eventually the whistle blows. Great opportunity that for Liverpool and Coombs perhaps just delayed a little. Didn't seem like Sweetman Kirk and Bavagida. Well, both too close, really, to Coombs as she came forward. Didn't spread out the City defence enough. Sweetman Kirk eventually ruled offside. Stokes. Just can't keep control of it. It's an open start to this second half as well, you have to say. It's a fair bit of the ball just playing, played around in the middle of the park. The opening 45 minutes or so. Picked off. Vegeta. They would latch on to the pass from Coombs. Wild swing by Horton, the forward still going though. Sweetman Kirk battling for it at the back post. Great defending by Jill Scott. Really good work at the back by the box to box midfielder. Vegeta just doing up her shoelace, which is why there's a slight delay. Horton wants the throw to come to her. Eventually does. Liverpool pressing a little higher. Weir. by Perfield 
Cut out by Horton. Scott. Closing down and Horton has to move it quickly. Stokes. Becky. Good intervention from Daniels. Lovely layoff on the top of the box. Weir sent it wide. Nikita Paris. Important challenge and it came off the City forward last. I don't think she agrees with the decision, but goal kick given. I think it's the correct call though. Liverpool, of course, looking to make the semi-finals for the first time since the 16-17 campaign in the Women's FA Cup. The season that City won it, and City were the side that knocked Liverpool out in the semi-finals. Last time they made the quarter-finals before today was back in 2013-14 campaign. They lost to their local rivals Everton 2-0. Chance to clip it forward here for the captain. You control that by bullet. She gets it back as well, the Belgian on that far side. Just shoved off balance as she tried to put it into the box. Liverpool trying to play it out from the back with Sweetman Kirk. Wind really whipping around this arena. It's quite an open stadium here, the Academy Stadium. Here's Scott. Broken up by Rogers. Scott once again though. She's trying to drive her way through down the right sideline. Cleared away to safety. Continues to rain here in Manchester, that surface is only going to get slicker. There's all sunshine in the first half. So much now for the second, and City trying to come forward with a fair bit of thunder in their attack, but get the final ball just lacking in quality. Just see a few people in the crowd escaping to shelter. Some are braving the elements though. for it to come into her feet it was well picked off by Coombs read the play perfectly didn't read the pass though they were telegraph it forward into the run of Daniels Walsh gets it wide Weir support on the overlap from Stokes Walsh once more
Good job we are at such an excellent facility today. Considering the conditions, wouldn't want there being any chance of this game being halted or anything due to the weather. It's a ground that can certainly handle this sort of downpour. Saw Walsh continuing her run off the ball, and it's only a matter of time before somebody tried to pick her out as she came forward. Difficult pass, though, for Stokes to make. Approach the hour mark. Remember, of course, if Liverpool do find an equaliser, we will have extra time penalties. This cup tie will be decided on the day. Still get to really see Liverpool threaten, though, in this second half. Unlike Becky and her city side. Back on the ball once again, the Canadian. Just allowing it to run away from her feet and now to play for a goal kick. A bit of pushing and pulling there. Make it taken quickly by City. And just trying to be direct and get it into the feet of Nikita Paris. Vegeta. Broken up by Weir. Walsh. Supported well. Bollert. Paris. Bodies in the box to aim at. Gonna squeeze it through to Becky. Caroline Weir was waiting at the far post as well. Free kick as once again the Liverpool forward is chopped down. It's that point where the wayside might think about some changes here. Coombs has space though. Decides to go long instead. They're gonna skip off the surface that. An inaccurate pass, but hardly, just for a moment, could have been caught out. Bullet. Look at the space on the overlap. Good run by Bonner. Lofts it into the mixer, almost dropping in front of Weir, who didn't anticipate it coming to her in the end. Missed by the head of the defender. City letting a golden chance just slip through their fingers for a moment. Coombs. Pavagida. It's behind its intended target. No real way that Christy Murray could come back to that. can tell you that Reading and Manchester United women are still goalless. The hour mark in their game. Their FA Cup quarter-final. Villa still trailing at home as well to West Ham's women. The Reading have hit the bar against Manchester United. Sounds of it, entertainment wise, we are certainly at the best match of the day so far. Still finally poised between two very competitive sides. Liverpool just need to try and find that bit more quality on the counter attack. City happy to control in the middle of the park, beating. 
poor pass from her. This is where runners need to get forward quickly, but it's broken up and falling to the feet of Jill Scott. Coombs certainly looks like the playmaker and the catalyst for Liverpool going forward, but again, it's a big ask that. Vegeta to chase that one all the way down. She's going to have some really tired legs after this one. Here's the goal scorer, Becky. Shrugged off the ball. Good strong challenge by Liam Rope. Murray goes wide. Perfield. Back again. Very impressive in the early part of her Liverpool career. There's Gemma Perfield. They might need her to spring some life from that left back position coming forward, much like Stokes is trying to do there, but once more her pass is off the mark. Good turn by Weir away from trouble. Jill Scott. Has room and support. Goes out to the 27-year-old Gemma Bonner. Walsh. Part of the Lionesses team in the She Believes Cup win, of course. Kira Walsh. And Ajida coming back the other way. Will look to take on Beatty. She'll look for support too. Yana Daniels. Aimless pass, not the best clearance though. Coombs. Made off well by Rogers. Perfield. That's a real chance for her to get forward. She tries to take on her marker. Mullert able to keep her at bay. Still going though here. Perfield chasing that down. A dangerous pass as well from Horton. Almost picked off by Pavagida. She got away with one, the city captain there. <laughs> Nowhere for Stokes to go, completely blocked off. City have the throw. Change being made then. As George Stanway comes into the freight. Replacing the City goal scorer. A little surprising. Some fresh legs in the front line. who has at times had her shooting boots on this season. She had a hat-trick in 6-0 win over Brighton back in October. Might be an early chance for her. She's making a run down the heart of the pitch. Here she is, first touch. She just can't escape the attention of the Auckland and kick as well for Liverpool. Safety first from E.T. back to the keeper. Horton. Scott.
It's down by Stanway. Had life very difficult for the Liverpool fullback. Good spell of possession and control for Manchester City this. No hurry. That breakthrough. They would certainly like to add to their advantage if they can. Very good touch that from Scott. Lovely quick feet. It's a little better in the crowded areas of the pitch and that's a free kick as well. And this is definitely Steph Horton territory. Stanway just looking to cut away from Leanne Rowe. And we saw her do it at half time. Let's see if she can do it in the real thing. This could be a killer blow for Liverpool. It is the captain. It's really well hit just off the mark but only just and there were plenty here in the academy stadium that thought that that was destined for the top corner but it's not to be the advantage isn't doubled liverpool are still just a goal away from leveling this up they might be two down though in a second Played off to Stanway. <laughs> Architects of their own downfall, Liverpool caught in possession, caught on the back foot, and the substitute punishes them. Nikita Paris squaring it for Georgia Stanway. And a very easy finish indeed. Just had to lift it over the oncoming keeper. City double their tally. Manchester City 2, Liverpool 0. Really thought that Paris was going to go for goal herself, but more than happy to provide the assist instead. Now it's going to be a tough final, 21 minutes or so for Liverpool. Coombs hasn't given up the chase, she chases in vain, much like Liverpool have done for a lot of this game, chasing a City side that are flying in domestic competitions this season. One trophy in the bag. Maybe another two to follow. It's not over till it's over. But it is tough to imagine the away side coming back into this. The first time they've played away in the competition this season, Liverpool. Haven't lost in their last three away from home in all competitions. Winning two of those, including a victory against Reading in the Conti Cup. Be it that came on penalties. Good knock inside. Slightly heavy touch from Walsh there. It's almost a pass straight back to Stanway. is lovely build-up play once again Paris was calling for it inside Stokes went the wrong way with the pass Liverpool come back the other way change coming as uh, Emsley places Caroline Weir
Walsh back out wide Emsley brought down she did fairly well did Liam Rowe with dealing with Weir and at times Becky when the two of them decided to attack down the left it's going to be tough now taking on fresh legs in the form of the Scottish substitute for Manchester City as the two City subs stood over this in the swinger perhaps from Emsley laid off instead not far off that far post either Stanway certainly felt it was worth a crack always just swinging the wrong way though Daniel's coming deep just to try and support City doing a great job of closing things off the long ball forward instead Another one dealt with this time by BT's head Vegeta Coombs unfortunately forced to turn away from goal step between the challenges but one back by Stanway Scott wide to Bonner there's a former Liverpool player Gemma Bonner will relish getting a victory over her former club I'm sure along will perhaps Peter Ferris and Jill Scott of course former Everton players Ferris is on the charge once again all alone needs support Hensley arriving Paris trying to go alone just ran out of real estate in the final third Remember, Chelsea already through to the semi-finals earlier today after their win away at Durham. Villa still trailing at home against West Ham elsewhere in the FA Cup quarter-finals. Still goalless as well between Reading and Manchester United. <laughs> Andrew Little coming on. She replaces Christy Murray. Former Doncaster Bells player. Might be a new added dimension with Little on the field. She's going to take that solo up front role, you feel from the way that Liverpool has set up since the change has great height she actually used to play basketball for England women's <laughs> taking her talents to the front line of Liverpool instead and a chance perhaps for those long balls to be picked off by her plus as well the slightly tired legs of Babajida It's going to be a corner for City though at the other end of the pitch. Liverpool need to focus, get their defensive heads into gear rather than thinking about eating into this deficit. They're not flooding bodies forward, although Horton and Beatty are up from the back.
Bullet. Teasing ball in. 3 0. Won't count. Paris tucking it away from close range after the error from the keeper. But the referee's whistle blowing. Ruling that one out. Just seemed to have snuck offside before the ball came in. She can't believe it. She deserved a goal as well today. But not to be, not yet anyway. Still 12 and a half minutes to go, plus any stoppage time. Sun back out and shining down. Particularly on the City players right now. Buller, send it down the line. Stokes. Slowly creeping down this left sideline. Bit of rest time, Manchester City after this game, of course. Final running towards the end of the WSL season. The next scheduled game, the 31st of March. It's here against Liverpool. We'll be coming back once again to the Academy Stadium. And Yeovil and then away at Arsenal on the final day of the season. It's an optimistic ball into the box, doesn't find a teammate, and another Liverpool attack ends prematurely. A fantastic finish to the campaign, of course, if it all boils down the league title race to that final day of the season between City and Arsenal. As I say, Liverpool can do City a big favour by beating Arsenal in the league next Sunday. Dilly dallying at the back, slightly dangerous. Daniels can get one now, it makes it a nervy finish, that's for sure. Perfield, it's a crack from range. Sweetman Kirk can't bring it under control. Hollert, Walsh, Scott rips it out into the space, neat control as well. Emsley. Looking for the overlap on the far side. It didn't come early enough, though. to run into and get behind the defender as well another really good recovering challenge from Liam Rowe just for a moment thought she'd lost that battle but she was strong and fair given away cheaply though by her teammates Wolf sends it into the box Paris can't get to it Rowe slicing it clear Coombs escaping the trouble Liverpool ball as well for Manchester City Warren Hemp the one to enter the fray Tessa Vula making her way off the Belgian
score in the FA Cup clash against Tottenham. Did Hemp. Still feel that if Liverpool can just snatch something, we have a frantic finish on our hands. Flicked on. Only just off target as well, really. Little's header. Just for a moment could have caused a problem. Perfield firing it in. That's what she's on the pitch to do, to be a big target up front. Beattie just down on the deck for the moment. Picking herself up and seems ready to go for the final seven and a half minutes. Just trying to find space. Almost looked a little panicky there. She goes back to her captain, Bradley Auckland. Again, there's space on this near side on the flanks because Liverpool are only playing one up front and the wingers aren't as high up the pitch as the forward. Just means that City have an easy collection. At least they've pressed high up the pitch, but the fullback is penalised for the challenge. Turned by Sweetman Kirk away from trouble. It's going to lock that pass from Emsley. City in no rush to hurry things along. to the big sides really away from home this season Liverpool Arsenal Chelsea Bristol the local rivals Everton and inflicting defeats on them another one here though was it's laid off by Paris Jill Scott can't bring it under control City saying that's fine we'll just build up from the heart of the pitch once again Steph Horton Combining with Stanway. Back to her captain once again. Liverpool just going through a spell of being tight to their players. When not in possession, there's a little bit of room here for Paris, though. Waiting for somebody to make the run. And that never came. Walsh almost able to turn her way through trouble was Paris free kick that gets Liverpool out of danger as Nephi was bundled over it's on the edge of the box idea just trying to get it into Stanway's path slightly over hit now for a throw Stokes Bavagide chase it down but was unable to get there. 
Stanway sends it wide. Just unable to pick the pass to Bonnet, who's creeping further and further forward. Emsley. A dive down the left side of her defender. Stanway. Has a go. Brilliant strike. Brilliant strike indeed. Game over. Two for the substitute now. Has made a real impact since coming on. Quite clearly. And that is Manchester City in the FA Cup semi-finals. Just shifted it onto her right boot. Found the bottom corner brilliantly. More than enough power to beat the keeper. Two minutes to go. The Liverpool fans will be ready to go now. And they've braved the elements. They're brave watching their side just be outclassed at times by this Manchester City team. It's not to say there hasn't been the effort there and there have certainly been moments of quality, but there hasn't been enough. The scoreline, not the uh, perhaps reflection at times of this game, but certainly wouldn't argue with it too much. Hemsley having a go herself, it bounced just in front of the keeper. Could have been a difficult one. Well, one back. Hemp trying to push forward. She was brought down, but fairly. City back line looking for a flag. And also looking for Jennifer Beattie to deal with the danger. Such a good combination, Beattie and Horton. A couple of errors. Not a perfect game, but we move into the final 60 seconds plus stoppage time. Another clean sheet for City. There's so many this season. Eight in the league this campaign so far. Two in the FA Cup, seven in the Conti Cup as well. Almost able to add to their advantage with that ball over the top. There, Jill Scott, the player of the match award. Maybe Georgia Stanway. I feel a little aggrieved by that, having two goals in her pocket, but Scott has certainly controlled the heart of the pitch. It's been a big part of City's success today. Two minutes of stoppage time to be played. I feel perhaps a mercy killing rule, though, is needed. Liverpool, I'm sure, don't really want to be out there for these two minutes now. I want to get back and regroup and get ready for Arsenal next Sunday on home soil as well. There will be plenty in the light blue of City be watching that game. And keep possession with the throw down this near sideline. a late change then see Hodgson coming on for Amy Rogers he's coming back from that ligament injury see Hodgson she'll be happy just to get a run around it's not her first appearance of the season of course but to be back and playing for Liverpool this season. Came back against Chelsea as a substitute there. 
last outing in that 4-0 defeat. It's another hefty defeat that she's going to be involved in temporarily. Convincingly one as well for City, who are getting set to join Chelsea. And perhaps West Ham in the semi-finals of the Women's FA Cup. Stokes, last few seconds, just dwindling away here. And that is the full-time whistle, put another name in the hat for the Women's FA Cup semi-final draw. Manchester City will be in it, and they are looking for that treble this season. The Conti Cup in the bag. They are two steps away from the Women's FA Cup, and they are so close as well to the WSL crowd. They've put their name in the hat with a convincing victory here on home soil. Becky and a brace from Stanway giving them the victory. It finishes Manchester City 3, Liverpool 0. We can take a look at the highlights from a cracking encounter for the home side here at the Academy Stadium. It all started so brightly after about 25 minutes. Nikita Paris was just able to guide the ball back into the path of the Canadian. Becky initially trying to set up Weir. That's a decent finish, isn't it? Smashing it into the top corner of the near post. Point blank range, no chance for the keeper. City were on their way. Babajida for Liverpool. That was their best effort for the opening 45 minutes. A crack from range. She had so few chances, though, in this one. Steph Horton. Trademark free kick, agonisingly close to doubling the advantage, but they wouldn't have to wait long after that from the resulting goal kick. A poor clearance indeed. Nikita Paris so unselfish to square it to the substitute Stanway. Really neat finish, just sliding it under the keeper. After 69 minutes, City doubled their advantage. Stanway would go close to getting a third. Not long after that, just whipping away the 73 minutes. But eventually, the third was going to come. Stanway creating the space on the edge of the box, a clean sight at goal and a really good strike into the bottom corner. That puts City into the semi-finals. A big thank you for joining us here. A cracking afternoon for the Women's FA Cup. Even better if you're a City fan. They win and are in the semi-finals. It finishes City 3, Liverpool 0. We'll be back next week. Your lips, stop your...